Hey guys, Shalana here. Welcome to The Bin Zone. Today we're talking about Invincible and Jupiter's Legacy. I just feel like the month of May has been filled with superhero stuff. We have Invincible, we have Jupiter's Legacy, we have Falcon and Winter Soldier. So much has gone down in the month of May, but today we're focusing on Invincible and Jupiter's Legacy. So let's start off with Invincible. And I have to say, when I first saw Invincible, off rip, I've heard about it because I'm a big comic book fan. Like, you guys can't see my collection, but I'm mainly into DC and Marvel. So when I first heard about the show Invincible, it intrigued me because the animation style reminds me of Young Justice. I have Young Justice, or well, Aqualad from Young Justice poster right there. And I have to say, it intrigued me because I love Young Justice. When it comes to superhero animated TV shows, we have the classic goats of the untouchables. X-Men the Animated Series, we also have Batman the Animated Series, right? And to me, my personal favorite, my personal bias is Superman the Animated Series is up there. And then from those three, those are the top three pillars of superhero comic book cartoon TV shows of all time, right? And you run that off with Young Justice and maybe Spider-Man or X-Men Evolution, those top five. So I'm like, okay, Invincible has tall shoes to fill, so I'm going to watch it because I put Young Justice in that top five. I'll give you my listing. I like, I moved Spider-Man out of there for Young Justice. So for you to get up there, it's going to take a lot, especially hanging with the big dogs. So when I first went to, so when I first got into Young Justice, so when I first went to, damn, why do I keep getting tongue-tied? So when I first started, so when I first started, Jesus Christ, what's wrong with me? So when I first started Invincible, I was like, okay, this is the typical coming of age story. And for the most part, I was like, okay, I like it. It's cool. It's nothing spectacular, but it gets the job done, right? And then Omni-Man was just doing his thing. And I have to say, there comes a time in everyone's life where you're defined by a hero. I feel like when I was seven or eight years old, it was a Friday night on WB. And Superman the Animated Series was playing. It was a special movie to commemorate the new season or the new series of Superman the Animated Series. And I watched it, a wide-eyed kid watching Superman take flight for the first time. My jaw dropped. Because up until that point, I wasn't really into comic books or superheroes. So I never saw a human being or a humanoid person fly in my life. So Superman has been that guy for me until Invincible. Until this guy, Omni-Man. And what Omni... Mm, I can't even begin to describe what I saw. Like, I just have to play. I just have to play it. I feel like... I feel like I just have to play it. Because when I was watching it, I was like, what? This whole episode so far was like, okay, it's typical superhero, nothing spectacular. And then I saw this. I'm watching, right? And I'm like, is his hand breaking? What is happening here? What is happening here? Holy shit! Yo, yo. I, I was not expecting this at all. I'm watching Invincible and I'm like, this is run of the mill. I'm not expecting any of this. And Omni-Man goes and does that. Yo, I told you guys in the beginning of this video, I'm a huge Superman fan. And the Superman pastiches have been going through, since the 40s, they've been making different variations of the Superman-like figure, the Ubermensch, right? And I'm like, okay. They're cool, but they're not Superman. And then Omni-Man comes along. And I have to say, he's not Superman. But holy shit, I have I was floored. I was not... Exp when I tell you, like, if I had a wig, it'd be snatched right about now. Because this is ridiculous. I was not expecting any of this to go down. And the fact that Omni-Man did that so casually while fighting the Invincibles version of the Justice League. I was sitting here like, yo, that was the Flash. Could you imagine? And then the fight goes on and he takes down the entire Justice League of the Invincible Universe. And My goodness. My jaw was like this. I could not understand what was happening. But it stirred something in me. I was like, who is this Omni-Man? I have to learn more. So I start watching the show and I start to get an understanding of the character of Omni-Man. And at first, he comes off as your typical family man. He comes off, he has his kid, he has his wife, he's the greatest superhero on the planet. Omni-Man is doing his thing, right? So we can't expect much out of him in the sense of Omni-Man isn't your run-of-the-mill Superman. Like, 
something is happening, something dark, the mystery of what's going on. And at this point, I'm invested in Invincible. I can't go and watch or I can't go and read the comic book because it would spoil me. I have to go along the journey. So I'm watching and I'm like, yo, I was not expecting this at all. Like, how? When I tell you guys, Superman is my favorite character ever. Like, you can actually see his poster right there. I have Superman figurine over here. I have nothing but Superman comic books. Like, the very notion of what Superman stands for is the antithesis of what Omni-Man stands for. And just the dichotomy between those two. You... I, just keep, I just keep losing my focus. I just keep losing words to describe the epicness I felt. What... It's that moment stirred in me watching him fight these guys. And I had to keep watching. I had to find out what was happening. So as I'm watching the show and I'm looking at the journey of Mark's evolution as a character, right? I'm like, okay, Mark is going down your prototypical main character journey, your shonen main character. Like if you guys watch anime, you guys know he starts off, he's kind of trash. Like there's someone who's on a higher level, Omni-Man, and he's trying to ascend to that level so he has to train he has to go on missions he has to do these things and as the show goes on it's a clear distinction between omni-man and invincible because omni-man does the ass whooping omni-man does the beatdowns omni-man doesn't fuck around while on the flip side mark stays getting his ass whooped right mark stays getting everything handed to him and i'm like i get it i understand but the overarching story of Invincible is the coming of age of Mark. But on the backdrop is the mystery. It's built upon Omni-Man. I feel like had Omni-Man not had that evil flip, Invincible as a show wouldn't be as good. Like, we wouldn't be invested. Like, going from the first episode thinking, yo, this is a happy-go-lucky run-of-the-mill superhero coming of age story. He's doing his thing. Watching him destroy this universe's Justice League. What? Let me stop calling them this, this universe is Justice League. What are their names? Because I'm doing them an injustice. I mean, they're characters too, so I, I should have their name. What, let me pull it up. Give me a second. What are their names? I think it's the Union of Justice. Or is that... The Union of Justice is Jupiter's Legacy. So what are they called? It is... Let me pull that up for you. Let me see. He's part of what? Is, what is he? Jesus! What the? F hmm. Let's see. The Guardians of the Globe. My bad. Like <laughs> it took me a while to pull that up. But the Guardians of the Globe, right? When he took them all on. And now this mystery is brewing. And now we're trying to find out what's happening. Mark is going through his journey. But before we get to the finale, and baby, when we get to this finale, like what we thought of Omni-Man, let me save that for the end of this. Let's go down Mark's journey, right? So Mark is living his life trying to be the best version of himself. He, he's a family guy. And then he gets himself a girlfriend in Amber. And I want to take a moment to talk about Amber because things have been trending online about Amber. People have been talking about Amber. And at first, when it was first revealed, it was a whole thing of the comic version of Amber is white. And they kind of race swapped her to being black, which I'm okay with because representation matters. I'm a black guy. I like to see people who look like me. Fuck it. So I'm with it, right? But then as the show goes on and her and Mark are having issues, Mark is standing her up a lot. And Mark is not, I mean, he's a superhero. Like he has to do what he has to do. But at the same time, like, he has a girlfriend. Like, can you give her some time? But Mark doesn't do that. So I'm like, okay. Amber starts to get frustrated with Mark. And I understand that. Like, yo, like, if I am your girlfriend, I am the priority in your life, or so you say, yo, why do you keep standing me up, showing up late, and just, like, being flaky? Like, you're, like, you're hiding something. So when Amber is upset, before you guys jump in my comment section, she's like, he's a superhero. I know that. You know that we all know that, but as we're watching the show, we're unaware that Amber. That we are aware Amber doesn't know. So it's perfectly natural as a seventeen-year-old girl to be like, you know what? It's over between you and me. Like I don't want any parts of you. Like you can't even give me the attention I need. I deserve 
as your girlfriend. Because remember, Mark pursued Amber. She was just minding her business. So you come after me, you got to treat me right. So when she dumped him, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, Mark isn't here for you. You clearly have needs he can't fulfill. It's over. But then when he reveals himself as invincible to her and she says she knew for weeks. Listen. Amber, baby girl, you knew for weeks, which is cool, which is cool by me. Like, if you knew and you were waiting for him to tell you, I'm okay with that because that's your right. But when you called him a coward in front of people, when you made it seem like he abandoned you guys and he was literally getting his ass beat in front of everybody as invincible and you knew, Amber, you fucking knew. Oh, my God. I was upset and I see why the internet was so mad at Amber like you knew that I was invincible and you still called him a coward and embarrassed him in front of people at the time his best friend did not know he was invincible no one knew but you did Amber you did and you embarrassed him and you made it call him a coward and then you go out and find some random college guy to hook up with to what ease your sorrow that Mark left you and at first I was like that's kind of fucked up of you doing that because that's your boyfriend but at the same time Teenage girls, emotions. But the fact that you knew, you knew he was invincible changes everything. Like, I was rocking with Amber. I was team Amber because, you know, Amber's a fine black girl and she's voiced by Zazzy Beats. <sighs> I could spend an hour talking about Zazzy Beats, but I was team Amber. But ultimately, Amber suffers from the same problem I have with my favorite hero, Superman. Like I said, Superman's right there. I love him. But the whole Superman Lois Lane dynamic. Because it's hard for me to get behind a superhero and a regular person because the regular person will never truly know what it means to be a hero and what you have to go through and the sacrifices you make to just be with them, let alone what you're doing out in the world. So Amber and Mark, I was never a big fan of them, but that brings us to my other character that I grew to like, Eve. And I have to say, at first when I saw the name Adam Eve, I was like, Hmm. I don't know. But as the show went on, I found myself liking Eve. And I found myself wanting Eve to be with Mark. Especially after what Rex did. And let's be honest, guys. Like, Rex is a piece of shit of a character. So Amber, of course, deserves better. And at the same time, I have to be honest with myself, right? I am king of loving piece of shit characters. I and mean, by far, my favorite character in this entire show is Omni Man. I'm putting Omni-Man on my tier list of characters I love on the same level as Superman. Like, Superman's here, Omni-Man is here. Two different characters. So I'm clearly into piece of shit characters. Cersei Lannister was my favorite character in Game of Thrones. Do I need to go on about my taste in characters? I love the complex, or is it complex? Yes, complex, evil character who has hidden agendas and they're... They tend to be extra malicious, but I like that because it adds some spice into the show or movie or whatever it is that, that I'm watching. So, so I'm all for it. So with that being said, Eve was a breath of fresh air and Rex was a piece of shit. But at least with Omni-Man, it came to the fact that Rex may have been a piece of shit. And Omni-Man is a piece of shit. But at least Omni-Man is the type of guy who's like, yo, I'm a piece of shit. Do something about it. I dare you. And he can back it up. Like, Omni-Man is the strongest person on the planet. So when Omni-Man tells you to do something, I dare you to step to Omni-Man. But when it comes to Rex, Rex is like a fake-ass gambit with his powers. I'm like, yo, Rex, like, you're not even qualified to be a piece of shit character. Like, you're, you're like the worst type of shitty character like you're an asshole you're annoying and you're overall weak and you can't back your shit up like when monster girl beat his ass it was like bro come on come on but with that being said i enjoyed mark's relationship and his dynamic with adam eve and i wish that they were more of a thing as opposed to him and amber even though what i think about amber is like i enjoyed her character but eve is a much better match 
But I know why you guys are here. We're here for the finale. But before we get to the finale of Omni Man's epic beatdown, let me run down a few things that I liked about Invincible. I like the character of Titan because at first, Titan reminded me of Luke Cage, right? And if you guys saw the Netflix show, if you guys saw my videos on Luke Cage, if they're still on my channel, I'm not sure. I was not a big fan of Luke Cage's goody two shoesness, right? So we have Titan, and he represents, I mean, the brothers, one, and the fact that sometimes the greater good, like Mark fighting aliens and all that, is cool for the planet. But on a more micro scale, gangs and gangsters exist, and the people in the slums suffer the most. So he represented that suffering. But as him and Mark went on and Mark got the biggest beating of his life in the entire show when he fought that battle beast creature and they tried to take down Machine Head and Omni-Man just watched as... Yo, I know it's kind of fucked up that Omni-Man watched Mark get his ass beat. But at the same time, he did call Cecil and send backup because remember, it was an anonymous call. And of course, Omni-Man was watching the entire time. So even though he's a piece of shit... The seeds of him actually caring about his son have been laid throughout the season. It's just he has his own way of showing it. But Titan as a character, as the episode went on, I felt pity for him. And I was like, oh my God, like his daughter has a sickness and they're also going to a food bank for the homeless to get food and they're dirt poor. So, like, he has all the fucking black stereotypes going against them. The only good thing about him is he has powers. So... I'm like, damn, it kind of sucks that his storyline didn't get resolved by the end of the episode. But the crazy part is the twist at the end. <laughs> like, after the takedown machine head, he became the new crown boss. He used Mark, got rid of machine head, and stepped into that role. And baby, when I tell you that I was floored. This was what I wanted Luke Cage to do. Granted, at the end of season two, was there three seasons of Luke Cage or two? Season two, he did become the crime boss, but it was reluctantly. Titan used the heroes who never gave a fuck about the world, put their lives on the line, and then he ascertained the level where he could possess the power to care for his daughter, his wife, and the neighborhood. And I thought, yo... That's pretty damn cool. That twist was great. I like that aspect. I love the fact that the black guy wasn't a fucking simp. But at the same time, it's like the black guy was kind of cold and slimy. Then you have Amber who's kind of annoying. It's like, okay, the representation's cool, but can we get like a non-fucked up black character? <laughs> That's just my thoughts on it. But even though I love Titan... And I love Omni-Man. Like, when I tell you I love Omni-Man, he's my favorite character. But my second favorite character in this show has got to be the Mahler clones. <laughs> when I tell you, I have not laughed so much at a pair of bad guys who are pretty intimidating. The Mahlers did it. Shut up, clone. That to me, that... that that is funny. Their entire dynamic, that whole cloning process dynamic, I enjoyed very much. And I love their interaction. I love what they did. I love how they do the cloning process and they don't let you know who the original is. Because then that creates a whole new set of problems. Think about it. If you know you're a clone, right? What is the point of my existence? To serve you? Like It creates a crisis of consciousness that you just don't want to avoid. And them being who they are, I, I enjoyed it. I loved them. They were hilarious. They were the levity that I needed because with Omni-Man's mystery and Omni-Man's badassery, like, I feel like with Omni-Man, then we have the Mahler twins or clones, whatever you want to call them, and then we have the generic bad guys. Like, generic bad guys, monster of the week, whatever. But when you have bad guys with character and bad guys like these who, who keeps cloning himself and it's so dope the way he does it and the whole concept behind it and it's hilarious, I enjoyed it. And after the Mahler twins comes Cecil. And at first, Cecil reminded me of the typical FBI guy. Like this guy. Like he's the FBI guy. He's the government guy. He works for the government. Like he has no emotions. Everything is the red, white, and blue. The flag. I stand for everything. But then as the show goes on, 
The character of Cecil really amazed me. He puts his ass on the line. He went to the battlefield to fight Omni-Man. And, bruh, like any guy who gets on the battlefield, like he tried everything. And he's just doing everything he does for the betterment of the world. And like, I like him. I like Cecil. Omni-Man, Marlow Twins, Cecil. Now, guys, for the heat, the resistance, or the PS de resistance, the moment we've all been waiting for, the finale. Baby. Damn, I keep saying baby. Why do I keep saying that? Because it blew my breath away. This finale, when we found out the truth about Omni-Man, and Omni-Man revealed that the Viltrumites are nothing but conquerors, and there was he was sent to Earth to conquer the Earth, and then he had a son, and then he loved... When he said what he said about Debbie, when Mark asked him, Dad, like, you love me. You love mom. What about mom? And he said, I see her as a pet. This is his wife of 20 years. That was nasty of him to say. That hurt me to watch. But at the same time, I'm not going to lie and say it didn't make his character that much more fascinating to me because how do you live with someone for 20 years and you don't care about them? You raise the child. You do what they want. Like the psychology behind like, yo, Omni-Man is psychotic, but he doesn't see that. And he sees the greater good of Viltrum. And I'm sitting here like, he's fascinating to me. No, he's simply fascinating. I will say though, the beatdown of Mark, the beatdown that Mark received was insane. Like, I want to take a minute to look at this for a second. Let's see, where is it? Omni-Man versus Invincible. Let's pull this up for a second, guys. Because this was insane to me. Like, when he f fought Mark, where is it? Is this... Did seeing that man lose his life disturb you? Did it hurt? Well, let's see how you handle That's his son! And that's not it. That's not enough to me, right? It's this scene here. It's this scene here. I am sitting here like, hold on. No. Yo, he held Mark down and Mark killed all the passengers and I had to watch it. Could you understand? Do you guys not understand the trauma Mark is going through at this moment? Like, Omni-Man, bro, seriously, this is your son that you traumatized. Like, even though you broke him physically and mentally, and even though Mark is a Viltrumite physically, like, he can heal, but that trauma is going to stay with him for life. And... Omni-Man did that to his own son. And I know what you guys are thinking now. Yo, Shalom, you just said you loved Omni-Man, but you just described all the reasons why he's a piece of shit. And at that point, I, my love for the character had hit rock bottom. Like, I was like, yo, this guy's kind of fucked up. Like, why would I ever endorse someone like that? And then at the end of the fight, when he's beating Mark, and we all seen the memes, think, Mark, think. After 500 years, after everyone's gone, who will you have? And Mark says, when he's battered and bruised, can't even get up, you, Dad. And then Omni-Man stopped, looked at his son, flew off into space, and then you saw tears flowing from Omni-Man's eyes. And I was like, he's not evil. Something's wrong. Omni-Man needs help just as much as Mark. Something happened to him. Like, if you come from a warm ranging planet and you come to Earth, because we also saw the clips of him and Debbie when Mark hit his first home run as a kid watching Mark play baseball and how proud he was and how Debbie became the unsung hero. Like, the show is about Invincible being a hero, but Debbie and Cecil are the heroes. Debbie 
tamed Omni Man as best as she can. And he really cared about Mark. And I feel like Omni Man is misunderstood or misunderstands his place or his role. And to me, that is fascinating. To me, that just took, like I told you, his character had it rock bottom for me. But after that scene and him flying off, I was like, this character is fascinating. I need to know more. I love the complexity of this character. And that's where my love of these bad guy characters come from. Like, if you're just evil like Ramsey Bolton or like a generic monster of the week, I don't give a fuck about you because you're just evil. But like, when you're complex like Omni-Man or Cersei and things in your life happen to make you this way, I want to know what happened to you, how that happened. This is all a reaction. So I can kind of, maybe I'm a sucker, but I could forgive I mean, it's easy for me to forgive. I was not doing getting my ass beat. I, I wasn't Mark getting dragged around, right? But I could forgive if I understand why. And the fact that there's a shred of humanity left in Omni-Man really did a lot for me. And overall, like, I fuck with it. I enjoyed the show. Like, it took me on highs and lows. And the fact that I have a character who is the antithesis of Superman, and I'm so fascinated by him, and just his motivation, his reasoning, and everything that makes Omni-Man, Omni-Man. I couldn't have asked for anything better. In this one season alone, this one season of Invincible alone, I have to say, I talked about the animated superhero hierarchy, the original X-Men, the animated series, Untouchable. Da -na 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 untouchable. Batman, the animated series, Untouchable. And my own personal biases, I'm going to put Superman in there, but I can understand people don't want to put Superman the animated series in there because he's my guy. But off one season of Invincible, he's up there, man. He ha Invincible in one season is in the top, top five animated superhero shows ever to me after one season. But that's my thoughts on Invincible. That's my breakdown of Invincible. I'd love to hear yours. In the comment section below. And if this is the podcast, go to the YouTube channel and comment your favorite moments, your favorite characters. I want to know it all because Invincible to me is a masterclass in superhero storytelling. And Robert Kirkman, the writer of the original comic book, who also did The Walking Dead, and I have to say, the first four or five seasons of Walking Dead, masterclass in storytelling. This guy is on to something. But that's it for Invincible, guys.